Hi, I'm Steve Earle, and you're watching 101.9 Kink Radio in the Skype Live studio. Steve, I, I was just thinking about protest songs, and you came up in, in a social consciousness where protest songs really shaped the future of our country. Do you think they're having the same impact today, or well, that yeah, we're having yeah. enough of them? Well, I, you know, I'm not going to just you know tell anybody else what they're supposed to write. Not everybody should write protest songs, probably, because not everybody's good at it. Uh, <laughs> but because uh, it, it's it's a it's a hard thing to do to get people uh, when you write songs about political. This is a very unpolitical record that I just made because I didn't know this was going to happen when I wrote the songs. But um, and I still write more songs about girls than I do anything else. But it's, uh, <laughs> That's a little protest right yeah, there, well, there's, isn't there's, it? There's, yeah, there's, yeah. There's some. There's a political element, but. Um, <laughs> You know, it's just, uh, it's a tricky thing. Music works. It really does work to deal with uh, divisive issues. And right now, your divisiveness is, is uh, probably what we get, need to start combating because it had a lot to do with, I think, what, what just happened was us losing sight of that a little bit, people on both sides. And, um, you, know, um, you know, there really aren't two sides. Um, there really is only one. And uh, people can be wrong and they can be a little bit... You know, had the, the the wrong idea about what's supposed to be happening, but the the idea in a democracy is is it's us. You know, we kind of get the democracy that we deserve, and, yeah. and uh, so we need to rethink some things. Probably, I and love it doesn't that. mean it's not about left and right. That part, I'm always left. That's that's <laughs> one of my functions on this planet. But I'm not talking about changing that, changing a political philosophy. I'm talking about accepting the realities of how it all works and then figuring out how to how to make a difference, how to actually go out there and make things that make the world better happen. It's so cool. So You Want to Be an Outlaw is the new album. Yeah. And are, are girls showing up on that one? There's lots of girls on that one. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, they're probably all on it in a way. Um, it's a culmination of a lot of stuff. It's mainly a musical statement about the moment I came to Nashville. It happened uh, kind of by accident. Um, I'd written... I was writing songs for the record I made with Sean Colvin and the blues record, and that was a certain kind of thing. And then T-Bone Burnett asked me to write a song for the TV show Nashville. And I wrote, you know, my idea of a country song, and it was a, a prison song. It's called Mama, if Mama Could Have Seen Me. It's on the record. Um, and I wrote it specifically for the show. I'd never seen the show. I just read the script, wrote T-Bone the song, sent it to him. They used it. And then I wrote another song for the show when Buddy Miller took over. And when I got done with it, or actually done with the Colvin Earl record and halfway through the tour... I start thinking about my own record, and I get the two songs out, and I look at them, and there's oh, there's kind of a vibe here. They kind of go together, and I realized what was happening. I'd been listening to like I do every seven or eight years, um, and, um, and whether I need to or not, uh, it's one of those records that's always in that big rotation for me. It's called uh, Honky Tonk Heroes, which is a Waylon Jennings record from 1972, yeah. and I found my pit myself on the back pickup of a Fender Telecaster for almost this whole record. I mean, there's a few acoustic wow. songs, but it's just, uh, it's, pretty, it's very fun. country, but it's very electric too. And, and, uh, we're pretty proud of it. It's the best band I've ever had. And we've added a steel guitar player for the first time in years. And, uh, it's um, it's 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 pretty cool. I'm I pretty heard you you got Miranda Lambert on a couple, on at least one song. Did you end up getting Willie? Was Willie? No, willie to... Willie's on the on the title cool. track. Uh, Miranda and I wrote a song together that's that's on the record and, and that we sing together. And um, the great Johnny Bush, who wrote Whiskey River, which is the song Willie Nelson opens with every single show that he does, is also on the duet on the record. Wow, I love it. This um, hall and these shows are brought to us by this incredible mental health organization here in Oregon called Trillium Family Services. And we like to talk to artists about where they're at in recovery, what they, what kind of message they could have for other people who might be struggling. And I know you're now, is it three decades sober? No, it's not. It's 22 years. It's that's a, it's a long time. That's pretty cool. If, I, if it was three decades, I'd be really old. Because <laughs> uh, it took so, me a, took me a while to get sober. So. so tell me what you do to stay well, Steve. I go to meetings. I call my sponsor, uh, and I sponsor people. It's probably, you know, sponsoring people has probably been what saved my life the last few years because that's kind of part. It's sort of. You know, uh, you know, I didn't. It wasn't that hard for me to stay clean for a long time. And then I hit a patch the last few years when there was a lot of things going on, and and uh, yeah, I really had to depend on the program. And the part of it I depended on the most was the fact that I had people that that I felt responsible to, that I had to kind of suit up and show up for every day. And that's, Love it. That's how it works. Thank you so much for your music and just for a lifetime of advocacy. Really love it, Steve. Thanks. More music, Steve Earle. Yeah.